Howdy, hi. Welcome. How is everybody? First. Uh, that's <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> First is only funny when um <laughs> when it's like ludicrously not first. <laughs> like you go to a video that's like a year old, it's got thousands of comments. You type in first. <laughs> that's just funny. <laughs> we should start doing last for like old videos. Just leave a comment that's like last. <laughs> How is everyone? Are you all good? I hope so. Howdy, welcome, hello, hello. <laughs> I felt it important to stream today. I usually stream like often on Wednesdays. Um, call twi <laughs> called Twins Twitches, I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> that's good, that's good. That's glad I'm glad everyone's good. Um, I'm not gonna be able to stream tomorrow or the next day this week, so. And today's stream will probably end up being a little bit on the shorter side as well. Because I'm a busy bee. Uh, because uh, uh, the the help twins move out of her bad apartment uh, goal has is in action. It is, we're marching forward with that. <laughs> so even though we didn't get to that 1000, that's fine. You guys have been um, so helpful. Like, ge genuinely, uh, uh, your guys' donations to towards my help me get out of a bad apartment goal have been instrumental to actually helping us get out of this bad apartment. And it's actually happening, um, and, and you guys are really swell and awesome, and I wanted to say thank you, because I, I really couldn't have done it without you. And, and I appreciate everything you guys have done for me. Uh, so thank you so much, and that's why I won't be streaming tomorrow or the next day <laughs> because I'm getting out of the bad apartment <laughs> What's hilarious so I had mentioned this previously That I had set this goal and I kind of chose a random day in the future when I set it um, a day that like you know was far enough out there you know gave us plenty of time but we had no outstanding like plans we we weren't even sure if we would be able to move when i set the goal <laughs> and i've like accidentally like i nearly nailed the day <laughs> like actual move-in day uh, somehow so ain't that fun <laughs> so uh, also i my room probably sounds echo echoier right now i probably sound like <clears throat> I'm in kind of like a fish tank or something. It's because my everything is packed up. <laughs> my room currently is only the things I like need on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> so it, it's not nearly as deafened as usual. A fun fact about that, my bookshelf uh, uh, died. <laughs> and I knew it would be. <laughs> my bookshelf has been knock, knock, knocking on heaven's door for a while now. Uh, and Vincent hated that because I had a very strict no cats on the bookshelf rule because I was like, bro, if you jump on this, there's a too real chance that it'll just collapse under your weight. And that's not saying Vincent's a fatty. I'm just saying that the bookshelf was already on its last limbs. So, uh, the bookshelf's gone. <laughs> I'll have to get another one. <laughs> Doesn't sound different. Well, that's good. <laughs> Watching twins from my fishbowl. <laughs> but yeah, so that's exciting. We're uh, we're still packing up a little bit today, which is why chatting uh, will be probably on the shorter side. We mostly just have like the kitchen left to do, which is good. Uh, but you know, still got things to that need to get done. <laughs> so that's my plans for today. But I wanted to still chat with you guys. Oh my gosh. Another fucking plan for today is Project Sekai. All right, everyone get ready for me to talk about Vocaloids. <laughs> so, Project Sekai, you all know I like it. And recently, like yesterday, they started ranked matches where usually you're 
playing co-op, if you're playing um, in multiplayer in Project Sakai, where you, you got five people playing a song together, and it's co-op, you know, everyone wins. <laughs> um, but we got ranked matches, finally, and I was really excited about that. And you know, I, I you know, get start started, set in, they put me in gold rank. And that's like it was middle, you know. Uh, difficulty it is like set to song difficulty twenty seven to thirty, basically always playing on master. That's where I ranked. And then I lost I won twice, and then I lost three times. And then I won once, and then I lost three times again. And I, I'm so pissy, shitty, stinky, poopy mad about losing. <laughs> um, so that's my adventures of ranked matches in Project Sekai. Is that I think it's fun, but man, it just, like, losing just really jostles my jimmies. <laughs> like, I already beat myself up if I don't full combo a song. But then for the game to be like, cool, now you're ranked down lower. You were gold rank level two, now you're gold rank level one because you're a shitty loser. Just, it just pisses me off. <laughs> so I don't know how much ranked matches I'll be doing, which is a shame. <laughs> it's the same reason why I could never be like too invested in Splatoon. Splatoon is really, really fun. And then you kind of plateau, and it, it just gets kind of annoying when, yeah, it, look, surprise, it's fun when you win <laughs> at a video game, and uh, losing just annoys me. <laughs> I, it's fine if it's close, you know, if it's a close match, then it's like, damn it, well, you know, GG's and everything, but the thing is that it's like, we're still kind of, you know, early doors, and so it'll be this thing where you, I just get like fucking creamed decimated and it's like how are you down here why are you in the gold rank when you're clearly better than this <laughs> you know so those are that's that's the outstanding thing on my brain <laughs> is being mad about project sekai but also desperately wanting to play more to prove to myself that i'm not bad at project sekai <laughs> Water break. Oh, let's get other Doug. Let's get, let's get a fancy Doug out. So go ahead and you get on out of here, Doug. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. And let's uh, now come on back in your fancy outfit. Okay, okay. Great. Perfect. Look a little far away though. Let's make you bigger. There we go. Now we got Doug on board. Hooray. <laughs> Pretty boy Doug, exactly. <laughs> Stream ended. Yep, yep, that's it. Stream's ending. Sorry, Excalibur. <laughs> Should have been more on time. No, just thanking everybody that I, uh, for uh, uh, helping us move, move out of the bad apartment. Yay! And also talking about Project Sekai. Oh my gosh, let's talk about Ruby. <laughs> we have to talk about Ruby. Okay, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm not watching Ruby because it looks so boring and bad and shitty. But um, I'm gonna pack Doug up, like stuff in the small box. No, 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 Doug can walk. Doug can walk on his own. <laughs> so that's convenient. <laughs> no packing necessary. Um, but oh my gosh, Ruby. Okay, okay. So, I'm not watching Ruby. Because <laughs> it looks bad, and it's annoying, and I don't want to support Rooster Teeth. And so whatever. But, <laughs> something happened. <laughs> and, and I only know because Critter is kind of, you know, keeping up with Ruby. And I was looking at her Twitter. <laughs> okay, and Jean has appeared. I guess Jean has been a wall. Uh, he's been missing in action uh, for the volume so far. And Jean finally appears. And, and, <laughs> I wonder, I, I think I have a picture of him. I think I can get him in here. Hang on, let me, let me get a picture of Jean so you guys can see. All right, all right, because, so, Jean appears and he's, aged up like there's some timey-wimey bullshit happening uh in 
in Wonderland where they are. Here he- here- this is what he looks like now! This is real! This is real! This is real! This is real! <laughs> it looks so bad! You can't see? He's got like long, long ass hair back there. Um, in a ponytail. And he's like aged. And not just like sort of aged. Like, he's got- you can see he's got gray hairs. He's got under eye bags. He's- he's rivaling Crow in terms of age. And, and he has showed up and, and, <laughs> he does look like an Adventure Quest NPC. <laughs> and he's got this shitty pissy looking armor. I know it's supposed to be like just aged metal, like kind of rust or something. But look at that. That looks like piss. That looks like sweaty, pissy, shitty armor. <laughs> Team Ruby are the same age, by the way. They're still 17 to 19. Jean is now uh, in his 30s to 40s. And he looks awful. And I I sit here and I question... Why? <laughs> that, that ain't armor, that's the back of a public toilet. <laughs> But I just, I don't understand why. <laughs> I don't, why did they do this? <laughs> like, how does this affect Jean's story? His character? Why? Why age him so much? <laughs> why do it all off screen? And what's really weird is looking at it is that I, it's like played for laughs. Like Team Ruby, I think they're just like, what? Ew, we were fangirling over Jean? <laughs> Gross. And then like, that's it. He's just old now. <laughs> like he's been in Wonderland for his whole life. He went in at 19 and he seems to be 40 here. That's a, a lifetime. That's so many years spent in a dis in a different world away from all of his friends and family and there it's not being explored <laughs> and i don't know there you know maybe they'll have a jean episode i do think it's hilarious that they just couldn't help it they had to make jean the hero they had to make him the protagonist <laughs> he has to be the special <laughs> and it's just it's it's literally the funniest thing i i can't believe we've been saying to each other allison and i we've been like remember how they jumanji sean <laughs> we've been saying that to each other just since we saw this <laughs> it's not even a subversion that's the thing like nothing was subverted it's just jean is old now. <laughs> Could be early April Fool's Day shenanigans. Rooster Teeth very rarely ever do April Fool's Day because um, I'm pretty sure that their- that April 1st is actually like their uh, anniversary. It's like April 1st or 2nd. So like they don't really do April Fool's Day things because they have their sort of anniversary special things to do instead. Um, so I don't know, unlikely, very un also pretty unlikely to have an April Fool's Day joke in canon, like in the show. <laughs> no other volumes have ever had anything like that. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, this has been the most interesting thing that's happened within a week. <laughs> it's, it's, I just, I can't believe <laughs> that this is real. This is, like, we were already going off the deep end with Ruby, volume 9 or whatever we're on, but boy, howdy. Jean is unique. <laughs> this is a unique, a unique problem. <laughs> Let's just put him back here, make him like a little poster. There we go, I've got a poster of old Jean. <laughs> if I'm ever feeling down... I can look at old Jean and laugh because boy, what a what a poorly written show. <laughs> I just can't fathom it. I can't fathom 
what made them think to do this in the first place? Why? <laughs> I just... What is... How does this add to Jean's story of being a, a leader and a healer and, you know, healing from the death of Pyrrha? This is exactly like volume... Four. <laughs> they were like... And then Yang got over her arm, but uh, that's boring to watch, so we put it off screen. It's like, look, Jean's he became the leader. He became a hero, just like how he wanted. And that happened off screen, uh, I guess. <laughs> They're gonna do one of three things with this. Either they'll go back and he'll age down, but keep his wisdom. Uh, or he goes back with them and stays like that. Those are literally the only two options. It's what? They're not gonna age him more. Either that or he dies, I guess, but... I don't, I don't, I mean, both are so possible. I don't foresee them aging him back down just because Ruby is weirdly insistent, like the show is weirdly insistent on sticking to its bad decisions. <laughs> and from what I can tell, um, uh, looks like you're moving out, but John's moving in. <laughs> from what I can tell, the cat, the cat, Cat. Cheshire cat guy. Um, he, his whole function seems to just be deus ex machina to get Team Ruby to continue to succeed and move forward. Slash, uh, make fun of critics. <laughs> so, it's, it looks like Rooster Teeth's entering their, um, dark writer phase. <laughs> dark Miles, dark Carrie, where they're not playing nice anymore. They're gonna... Ew, the critics complain about how we didn't see CL, so we'll have the cat bring that up, and Ruby will go, ugh. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think they're gonna age Jean back down. <laughs> I also don't really care. It does suddenly make all those people who shipped Jean and Ruby, um, really forces them into a, into a position, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now that he's three times her elder. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, and that's the funniest thing is so often people who who do ship Ruby and Jean, they'll like take aim at Rose Garden. Oh, because uh, uh, Ospin's there. That's gross. He's old. She's young. That's gross. She should date John. Ignoring how, so, Ruby is the same age gap between, it's like her and Oscar, they are like two or three years apart, and Ruby and John are also two or three years apart, but that's besides the point. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Ruby x John shippers have always been, you know, very aggressive towards Rose Garden. Um, and they'll always jump to Ozpin's there and he's old and it's gross. <laughs> but now, now how the turntables. <laughs> I stand by my assertion Ozpin's not gonna stay. <laughs> but Jean's now just old. <laughs> People really do I just act like Oscar doesn't exist, huh? Anything to try to prove your, your ship the more canon option, I suppose. Yeah, we are. We're, we're, we're making fun of Krusty Jean. <laughs> Like, uh, uh, like if, oh man, I, I like my ship better. So yours can work because, um, uh, uh, this reason. <laughs> I think that's really it, but no. No, no, nope. It's funny, I kind of forgot Oscar even existed, seeing as how Team Ruby have been completely ex, like, ex um, exodized from the plot. <laughs> this whole Wonderland adventure feels so fucking stupid. Like, and I'm st on the outside looking in these days, but thinking about it, I'm like, why in the shit would you even do that? Salem finally attacks. By all accounts, the main plot is finally actually happening eight years into the show. And then you decide, we're gonna have a whole big-lipped alligator moment. But that's gonna be an entire season of the show, of Team Ruby doing nothing special. And one could argue, oh, but they're doing character stuff. You know, we're exploring their characters, they're doing some important character building. And it's like, okay, they could have done that 
while also engaging with the main plot. <laughs> but I guess uh, rubbing two brain cells together and thinking of that is far too difficult for the writers over at Ro uh, Rooster Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never thought about it, but it really feels like they're trying to write the girls out of the plot sometimes. I mean, half the time, it's not even them, they don't even have to try. They just don't have Team Ruby do anything. It's been the Jean Pira Penny show since volume three. <laughs> Hi, welcome. <laughs> We're talking about Ruby. <laughs> because old Jean showed up and he looks so bad and it's just hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know who all is even actually making Ruby content anymore. I know um, Cal is. And I'm sure Murder of Birds is. Cause you gotta milk that cow, man. But uh, I don't, I don't know anybody else. If anybody else really is, I'm not. Critter kind of is. But uh, I, and Phoenix, you know, always has his uh, fixing Ruby stuff. But like engaging with Ruby content, like react videos or whatever, I just haven't seen a lot. But to be fair, I've never really watched. Oh, Dan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dan, Dan. But I've never really uh, watched React videos anyway. I, surprise, prefer discussions because I think it's easy to sit there and watch a cartoon and go, ooh, wow, ooh, the, they moved their sword. Like, it's easy content to do, but really good React channels have discussions that are interesting. Um, and I don't know, I feel like I've just never really been my kind of content to watch personally. <laughs> Have we got stanky volume nine outfits yet? No, that's the thing. They Jean, it's the antithesis of antithesis of what I actually expected. I thought Team Ruby were gonna take off a couple layers, like because they're in their jackets and stuff, because they were in Atlas, and so I thought you know perfect excuse just take off like their coats, and we have cool outfits for running around Wonderland. Uh, and they didn't do that, and instead, and I predicted Jean wouldn't get an outfit change. Um, and I was wrong. <laughs> Jean has gotten the most outfit change. <laughs> what a shame. He had just been handsome. Allison and I, we would talk about how it's like, listen, Atlas, Jean, that's a good fit. He looked handsome. He looked nice in the pants. He had a nice haircut. He was a, a swell looking boy. And now look at him. Pissy armor, Jean with long, stinky mustard hair. <laughs> <laughs> What a shame that Jean genuinely looking great throughout the redesigns until now. I- yeah, exactly! <laughs> but yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's for the best. A lot of people who were making Ruby content, uh, they deserve to talk about something that's actually decent. Like, you know, it's all started in a great place. And, uh, but eventually after uh, watching a show that just fucking absolutely refuses to listen to anything the critics say like at all to that refuses to improve itself at all we're all wasting our time talking about ruby it's just repeating yourself and i was th feeling that while like kind of discussing volume eight it's like i've said all this over and over they're still making these mistakes because they're stupid and a assholes so I, why why continue to dedicate effort towards critiquing something that so obviously shows no care in actually improving itself? You know, what's the point then? That's the point of critique, is to help people improve, but Ruby insists on, on standing its ground in terms of quality. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so we, we will be getting, um... They should get a new outfit in volume 10. One, two, three was their original outfits. Four, five, six, these outfits. Uh, and now uh, seven, eight, nine is the Atlas outfits, so 10. 10 is when they should get new outfits. The yellow stains are actually sweat stains after stain. Yeah, but it looks like piss. <laughs> I get that it's sweat, but he looks like he's pissed himself. It looks so bad. <laughs> Yeah, Murder of Birds has really uh, shifted over to Genshin, and you know what? Follow your dreams, boy. If he has fun playing that that game every single day, why not? Why not? <laughs> I, I am so sick of Genshin Impact art. 
I am so fucking bored of Genshin Impact. Like, very suddenly. I was like, Genshin's fine. And then, like, overnight, I was like, I am so fucking sick of seeing art of Genshin Impact characters on my timeline. I follow a lot of artists, and wow, they all like Genshin, because it does, they do have good designs. And so just, like, a switch got flipped. And I'm like, I am fucking sick of seeing these characters, of seeing this art style, of seeing these designs. I'm bored. I am so fucking bored. It doesn't help that they all kind of look the same. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, uh, I am- I'm tired of Genshin art, and I think it's just because Genshin's also been around for a long, long time, and I'm personally, I'm like, I feel like it's run its course. I, I feel like they ought to kind of wrap it up on Genshin and really start pumping character- people towards a, a new game. But, uh, I'm just bored. And it doesn't help that, obviously, favorites kind of come out in the fandoms. And so, even though they've got, like, 40-something characters or whatever in Genshin Impact, you'll see the same seven, you know, over and over and over. And it's like, great, this one again. I don't care. <laughs> but, uh, of all the things to have problems with, booey hooey hoo, artists I like are drawing characters that look nice is pretty low on the list. <laughs> Was you playing Tower Fantasy? I, yeah, yeah, I like Tower Fantasy a lot. I haven't played it in a long time. I basically only played that uh, during when I gave myself a tiny little Christmas break. Um, so basically since December, I haven't played Tower of Fantasy <laughs> because I've just been busy. <laughs> it was a lot of fun though. I made one friend, here's the real problem. Um, uh, cause it's a, an MMO and I got one guy to help me and uh, with a thing cause I was stuck. And then he was like, let's be friends. And I was like, hell yeah. And then I was nervous at the idea of having to interact with him again. Because <laughs> I was like, I want to just run around. I don't want to have to, like, chat <laughs> in the chat. <laughs> so uh, uh, it became harder to just jump on <laughs> in my eyes. <laughs> but that's, again, a me problem. <laughs> they paint themselves in the corner with a monetization model. Genshin, you mean? Yeah, I mean, kind of. I think... I think it was a really solid plan at first, but we've gotten to a point where there just are so many characters that um, they, they're just starting to feel redundant. And I'm not even talking about design, I like in terms of function, you know? You've got so, so many characters and it's like, how many different versions of man with sword and water can you do, you know? <laughs> and they just, uh, yeah, they, they do have their, a new, another game, Star Rail. Uh, I mean, they've had a couple of games. Genshin was just kind of the first one that really, really kicked off. Um, uh, you know what? You know what I want? You know what I want? You know what I fucking want? I want a game like Genshin Impact and like other things MiHoYo do. But I want it to be the opposite in terms of gender ratio. It's always you've got... You know, 95% girls and then 15% boys. And the I want a game that does have both boys and girls as like your cast, but <laughs> so tell me what you really, really want. <laughs> but I want the majority to be boys, because it's either boys and girls, but it's way more girls, or it's just boys. And I want a mix of the two. But where it's mostly boys. Even like Project Sekai, which I love. Sekai only has, counting the Vocaloids, six, six male characters out of its cast of 20-something. And um, I hit my desk there. And I'm just like, give me more boys, please. And you know, come on. <laughs> I'm bored. I'm bored of all these girls, of all these girl games <laughs> and having to survive off of my my driblets of of male characters that are interesting. <laughs> Smash Ultimate with chat one day. I don't know if I'm not really good with Smash. <laughs> I'm not opposed to playing it. I just don't think it'd be all that interesting. And I'm not good enough, like, Messiah, you you and Zero and, and people, and like, you all play Smash way more. And at that point, it's just watch twins lose. <laughs> 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 
Um, I feel like there was another thing I was gonna say with Ruby. Another thing about- Oh, Vacuo! Okay, we're shifting back over to Ruby because Allison and I were talking about this. So, um, in theory, what should happen is if they're following their own formula, it'll be three more volumes after this where they hang out in Vacuo. That's the desert, it's the final kingdom. Um, word on the street is that Carrie has also said that the next volume will have over 100 characters in it. And assuming that all of those are returning characters and no new ones, that's really stupid. But that's besides the point. It's even stupider if you assume those are all new characters. But, <laughs> um, and so we've got kind of like a running idea going on if we think Ruby is going to end at volume 10. Because if you say, next volume's gonna have over 100 characters, then that sure does sound like it's gonna be like the end of Endgame, you know? Like, we're we're doing our Avengers moment, everyone's gonna, you know, everyone is here, uh, kind of a thing. Like, you wouldn't bring back every returning character for not the finale, would you? <laughs> so, I don't know, that sounds like to me, like hints that volume 10 is gonna be the final one. Which I say good. This show is has been dead in the water for a while now. But thus is the question of, okay, so are we just never gonna go to Vacuo? <laughs> Thought it was gonna end at 12. Yeah, and then the company shat themselves uh, because uh, word, word got out that they're terrible. <laughs> and then they also fired all their employees because they don't make enough money. Um, at last, here for his glorious return, bronze me. <laughs> Don't have it. Uh, I think it's- you were close. <laughs> um, but, uh, so yeah, it's just kind of hilarious that- Because Allison and I are pretty confident that they have no good ideas for Vacuo. Like, as a- as a culture. As a- a land. <laughs> Without making it just vaguely- like Arabia slash Egypt, you know, kind of route one, white guys making a desert level. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and so, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong and they will continue marching forward, making, you know, three more volumes or whatever it is, and we'll have adventures in Vacuo. But Thank you. Oh, Lillian's back. Howdy. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, um, uh, but yeah, just a, kind of hilarious that if volume 10 is their last volume, it just means a, the, a whole kingdom is never explored. Uh, that's, that'd be like, I use the example of if Avatar, you know, season three, you know, they do their book of water and then they do they're, uh, you know, learning earthbending, and then, and then they get to the Fire Nation, and the season is five episodes long, and it's immediately Zuko's just a good guy, and Aang learns firebending in one episode. No, no life-saving field trips or anything. <laughs> so, uh, I was thinking it would be a Mad Max Fury Road type world. See, that's too interesting. You have to think like Miles and Carrie. And Miles and Carrie will probably make it a city next to a mountain. <laughs> Where the rich people are up higher on the mountain and the poor people are at the bottom. Or maybe they'll flip it and have the rich people in the shade of the mountain and the poors have to be on top of the mountain where it's hot. <laughs> and everyone is dressed like they're in Aladdin. Um, because... Because that's, that's, that's just how the entire rest of the world is. Only America Coded Atlas has people wearing t-shirts and pants. And everywhere else dresses as if they're in, like, the past. <laughs> Hope they don't touch vacuo so I can finish my comic and not, ha not have it look different. At this point, embrace the differences. Whatever you do will be more interesting anyway, I promise. If previous eras have told me anything, I think they'll have the poor people on the bottom and rich people are higher up, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking if I were in charge uh, of making like a desert kind of location like that, and how do you make it interesting? I would make it like a nocturnal sort of area where people are primarily out and about at night where it's colder, you know? And also make it like basically 
Vegas. <laughs> it's like one big city, and it's like red red light district, super Vegas. So it's really bright, but still nighttime. And I don't know. That's a that's a fun aesthetic. <laughs> Ask yourself what is popular. What is in popular game slash anime? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> How can they just um, copy Ishval without it being too obvious <laughs> from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know if they're, we're ever even gonna see Vacuo. Uh, the, seeing as how we went eight volumes, full volumes, without ever really learning about it, <laughs> other than some characters being from there, I think speaks volumes to uh, how little of a shit they, they care <laughs> about desert land. <laughs> Miles and Carrie had no right writing anything. I mean, I can't say that. You know, I'm not saying they don't have any right to write anything. You know, that's pretty rude. But I think, you know, and, and that's come from, uh, says me, <laughs> queen of the hypocrites. <laughs> I've called them assholes before. But I don't think it's inherently they don't have a right to write anything, but rather just I wish they had actually cared to improve. That's the that's the problem. Everyone has a right to write or create, uh, but just this like insistence on not improving is really, really the problem. That just Fallout New Vegas. It basically is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I think it's fun. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> this is big volume funny. <laughs> I I realize that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think they're fine writers in a vacuum the problem is one clearly they aren't prepared to write something at this level and two probably aren't given the resources like looking at how rooster teeth handles everything um i'm sure it's not just the animators who are you know uh uh pushed into crunch and stuff but also three to some degree they do have to take um take accountability for the fact that th even with limitations, you can still strive to improve. And I've seen nothing to hint at that, to imply that they have. So I'd say they still do have the right to write. But boy, I, I wish them, I wish for them that they actually learn to put their pride aside and learn that people saying this is bad aren't inherently bullies. That's my, that's, that's my take at least. Uh, because you know, as an artist, I get, you know, hearing this isn't good, you need to work on this. It, it hurts. It pisses you off. It's annoying. And especially if you hear it over and over and over. Dude, I get it. But you only can improve by listening to what others say. And not every critique is valid, of course, but clearly not all of them are invalid, you know? And that's that's always been my thing, is that just their insistence on not improving. Um, so, big ew. However, that being said, uh, I, I will also say though, Miles. <laughs> Miles had said early on, or no, that's not the sentence I'm saying. Miles had said that uh, he's technically not working at Rooster Teeth. He kind of is, but um, like he's still writing Ruby, but he left at around volume seven, because he wanted to go be a real writer, quote unquote. You know, he wanted to go write for games. And I don't know about you guys, but I haven't seen him come up anywhere in terms of writing. And and this isn't me saying he's bad, tee hee hee hee. But I do think perhaps it was a bit of a wake up call for him when he wasn't surrounded by his friends and other yes men to say, yes, Miles, yes, Miles, your writing is so good. You've definitely listened to people interact before and your dialogue do totally doesn't sound weird and robotic. <laughs> um, and I think having, you know, real employers tell him, no, we're not hiring you, this isn't good enough. Um, I, I hope that was eye opening for him. And and I think that's why we haven't seen Miles' name show up somewhere else in terms of writing, like uh, for a writing credit. Um, and again, this isn't me saying Miles sucks, but this is me saying that I think Miles for the first time has had to actually listen to criticism. And I hope that does result in improvement. I'd love to see Miles' name show up as a writing credit 
and to see improvement. That genuinely. <laughs> Despite how often I call these people assholes, I, I would rather see them actually get better. Why, why wouldn't I? <laughs> um, uh, but unfortunately, I feel like there's a, a not small chance that instead Miles will just get pissy about it and kind of just stick with Rooster Teeth forever and insist, well, here it's good. Here it's fine. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> At least John has a ponytail now. I just hope cutting it doesn't, you know, doesn't equal no more depresso. Oh yeah, that would be pretty lame. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't like how long his hair is. It looks- the, the ponytail looks weird. I think long hair could have been fine, but I don't know. It looks- it looks like a weird rat tail. <laughs> Just the way how the rest of his hair is, you know, with it being kind of long-ish, you know, near- like in his, in his face, you know? <laughs> There's also rumors that volume 9 may be the last volume if it does poorly, which would be kind of sad. Yeah, that would be pretty sad because I can't assume volume 9 can end the story in a satisfying way. Like, okay, let's pretend they get out of Wonderland at the very start of next episode. And the, what, they've got four? Four episodes left to, you know, wrap everything up? There's no way. <laughs> the fact that they call you very negative things and you still cheer for them is so telling. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I don't know. I have been negative in my critiques before, but... It truly has always just been a want to see Ruby and its writers and animators and everyone. I want it to be good, of course. I wouldn't have, if I didn't care, I wouldn't have spent, I wouldn't have wasted so many years of my life talking about it. And that's, and I think that's, that's the thing that should hurt them the most. Is the fact that I'm not watching it. I don't care anymore. Not about Ruby. Or I don't, whatever. I don't care. I'm not watching it. And not even just a, in a in a monetary way. That's one less, you know, view. That's one less person who could spend money on on our property. But just like as an artist for someone to go, I don't care anymore. I don't care about your story anymore. I don't care about this world anymore. I don't care about the characters anymore. So I'm not going to watch it. That hurts. That hurts far more than any sort of like Oh man, this part is so bad and, you know, if maybe if you actually, you know, tried for once, you know, no matter how mean I could be while critiquing something, nothing, I think, is more damning than me deciding I don't care anymore. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. I don't know how they think about it. <laughs> <coughs> we got what we asked for, but at what cost? <laughs> Could have sworn he was taking writing classes. Yeah, unfortunately, classes aren't a guarantee to improve, are they? I've seen plenty of people pass classes and it's like, mm, all right, <laughs> they technically got everything done, especially a creative class like that. In a lot of things, as long as you try, you'll get an A, you know? Because art is subjective, you know? You can't, you can't go, you did expressionism and I don't like expressionism, so you get an F. You know, so, I don't know. A class could have been helpful, but it was never a guarantee to be the solution. I feel the rat tail uh, is because they didn't want him to be feminine. <laughs> Maybe. I am definitely predicting a weird joke about it. <laughs> like a weird, like, like, gag about Jean's hair is so long and pretty it's like a girl tee hee tee hee he was raised by girls that explains why he's sometimes what emotional which is weirdly like toxic masculinity stuff sometimes in relation to humor around Jean in Ruby you know like I'm thinking about it in volume four you know when he first brought up his sisters and Nora's like you know that explains a lot and, and it's like ta ha 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 he's feminine tee hee tee hee that's the joke and it's like ew <laughs> This isn't funny? What the fuck, guys? <laughs> Jean has uh, has always provided strong rodent energy. <laughs> He's the sewage king. <laughs> I wouldn't call it wasted years talking to a Ruby. You made a lot of friends and made a platform for all your fun stories and art. I suppose. I appreciate that, Lillian. However, I will I will say that, you know, 
the the people who care about what I have to say about Ruby doesn't translate to the number of people who care about other things I, I talk about. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually a good a good segue. Uh, I should let you all know that I am looking to get a part-time job because I need to be able to actually afford uh, to pay rent. Um, and uh, I care. Thank you, Lillian. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, I cannot survive uh, on making, on killing myself making videos that only a thousand people watch anymore so but don't worry i'm doing my best to try to get a, uh, a job that will have a consistent schedule because fuck an inconsistent schedule Ugh, that's the worst but uh i still want to be able to stream you know on on the normal days with you guys so i'm doing my best to try to find a place like that um but yeah just just letting you know that if the schedule does you know stream schedule gets a little honky wonky that's why <laughs> i'll and i'll let you all know uh, if and that all starts to happen. <laughs> Cardin Winchester comes back just to bully him again. Yeah, he actually ends up being the final boss. They kill Salem. And, and then from the shadows, he appears. <laughs> and, and it's like, well, Johnny boy, looks like you finally arrived. And it's like, what? <laughs> The funniest bit was in volume one when he screamed and Yang said some girl is in trouble. That was good. Cause that that was good because it was it was just a gag about his scream, which was a little a little girly. <laughs> Miles, you know, for all for all the complaints I have, voicing Jean, he's not that bad. And screaming specifically, he's pretty solid at. <laughs> one day we'll be able to sustain twins with streaming and video making. One day. It'd be, it'd be pretty super fly. I was able to do it, like, for a while. Um, like, I I have been a content creator for about a year now. Uh, and that was really, I was really grateful for that. Because it was, it was in the throes of COVID. I remember um, mopping. A kid had coughed while I was on shift at retail. And a kid had a real coughing fit. And he coughed so much that he vomited. And I had to clean that. And it was mopping up that vomit. That I was like, I can't do this anymore. I can't stay here. Um, and I was really glad and lucky that at the time I was able to 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 quit and be able to pay for everything via YouTube. But that was way before streaming too. Unfortunately, my numbers really fell off, um, which really hurts. You know, I gotta say, seeing you know my subscriber count and seeing my view count, it really only hurts just because. And of course, I've. I've done this. There are content creators where I only care about, I care about it when they talk about one thing. But, um, you know, just like, you know, people like don't even care enough to click on a video. There was a long time where I was, I was like, am I shadow banned? Like, are people not seeing my videos? Like, in subscriptions? And no, they just decided, meh, I don't care. Which is, uh, the biggest shame is the fact that I started having fun. <laughs> I started talking about, I actively, I was like, I want to talk about things that make me happy. And, uh, and that was great. I've been having so much fun, like, editing, you know, gameplay videos. Those I'm, like, I'm, like, so eager about. And, um, you know, just talking about things that's, like, top ten things I like about a thing or whatever. And then people were like, I don't care. And it's like, what a shame that, uh, that people only liked my content when I was upset. <laughs> At large, of course. You know, you know, I can't- oh, oh, not- not everyone. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, it- it hurts a bit. What was funny is, I- one time I tweeted about it, cause I was like, man, this is a bummer, I'll tweet about it, you know? Cause I- I, I can share my feelings about my work, just like any other person. And, uh, two notable things happened from that. One is one guy was like, you're gaslighting your fans to watch your content, and I was like, grow up <laughs> bro you're so cringe you spend your whole day tweeting about how much you want to bang cartoon characters <laughs> but the other thing is i got a lot of people <laughs> i got a lot of people being like i haven't gotten around to watching it yet geez or like yeah i i just got home i'm about to watch it like basically giving me excuses and i was like i don't know who <laughs> 
You didn't need to give- this isn't me looking for excuses. I didn't know- oh, you know, Fart Sniffer 24 hasn't watched my video yet, I'll call them out on Twitter. No. <laughs> People basically just- just throwing themselves under the bus. <laughs> it was just funny. Was genuinely. I was just like... <laughs> What are you guys doing? <laughs> In all fairness, I still la watch and laugh at your older videos because the anger energy was super hilarious. I, I mean, that is fair. I was watching some of my older videos the other day and I was like, damn, I'm, I'm hilarious. <laughs> I'm the funniest person alive. <laughs> oh, even your first video. Oh man, the first video? That's so cringe. The thing I always think about with my first video is how... I was so hype about Nora and Ruby's um, team attack. I was like, this is epic, this was awesome. And looking at it now, I'm like, why did I think that? You don't even see the impact. They like zip together and then we cut to like a shot of the sky as the rocks like fall apart. And like, we don't even see them hit the guy. I was so easily, and people should have known back then that I, I was really approaching Ruby with baby gloves because I was still excited about stuff like that. <laughs> you know, you'd think with me, my enjoyment of your content would live and die whether you talked about Ruby or not, but it's actually the opposite. My enjoyment of Ruby pretty much lived or died whether or not you and Critter were talking about it. Wow. That is that is fun. There are, you know, when you have someone who's like, they talk about thing. I couldn't give less of a shit about thing, but... All, I care about the thing as long as they are talking about it. I love it when you have YouTubers like that. The, the best has got to be, I've got like one guy who talks about scary things. It's the only way I can really engage with scary things. And, uh, and, and as long as he's talking about it, I care. And, and, and I can't panic. <laughs> it's Sagan Hawks. Look him up. He's got a shitload of FNAF stuff, which is really fun. But he talks about other things too. And they're all really good. So check out check out Sagan's videos if you want a spooky, scary good time. I won't lie, twins. Your anger-fueled videos feed something in my soul. The line about ripping your fingernails off at the Pyrrha statue lives rent-free in my frontal lobe. That's the thing. I, I really peaked with that video. I really, like, honed in on... I really honed in on, like, hyperbolic anger. And if I were to do talk about something that's, like, annoying again, that, I think, is the avenue I would go about doing it in a, in a way that makes me laugh. Because, like, really g getting extreme with how upset you are about something, like, like, <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> <laughs> It's just funny to be like, I'm gonna, I, I need to take my pills. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm hallucinating. This is so bad. <laughs> we all learn. We do all learn. Everyone's gotta learn. <laughs> but Ruby and Nora, but Ruby and Nora don't do it at all ever again. I know, right? That's the thing. They'll come up with these cool things. And then never ever do them again. Like, remember how at the end of Volume 5, uh, Ruby was like, they were fighting Hazel. And then Ruby called out the ladybug technique, you know, for them to do that team attack. And then we cut away to like, Yang talking to Raven. But it was just like, wow, how come we actually haven't seen, you know, Freezer Burn or Ladybug or any of those team attacks again? <laughs> <laughs> Twins, I just got my leg blown up. Can your videos wait? God, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have been so insensitive. <laughs> it's true. I, I don't pay attention to vocal stuff, but I can't look away when you talk about it. I think that's the, um, uh, that's the secret, isn't, isn't it, Captain? Is if someone's enthusiastic about something, then... It's just fun watching people be excited, isn't it? <laughs> and that's the thing, is I get excited about expressing how angry I am sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, the Banjo-Kazooie quiz with Allison. Quiz videos are, fun fact, the most likely ones to not make it to the final cut. I've quizzed Allison on other things before, and I've quizzed uh, Critter on other things as well. Um, and those videos never got finished because they are a beast to edit and and they can really wander in terms of um, funny value, which is the thing I value the most, is if a video, especially a quiz like that, if it's funny. Um, so, uh, 
Yeah, just a little bonus fact. Uh, quiz videos are technically the rarest and hardest to con conclude just because they have the highest chance of not being good enough <laughs> to finish. <laughs> they could have done it in volume six with the mech. You're right, yeah. Oh well, what a shim sham. What a shim sham baruni. I guess that's what happens when you only have one person on the team who knows anything about fight choreography. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I have free. <laughs> Bussy King. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I agree. I also hate how Ruby's speed has just developed into a big blob. Like, she- and, you know, cause in volume two, when she did it during the food fight, it really conveyed speed. It really felt like she was, like, just going too fast. But these days, she just be like, she effectively teleports. Like, it'll happen really, really slowly. Like, she just kind of transforms into Blob, and then that can just fly. It doesn't convey speed. It looks more like Ruby can just become an amorphous ghost <laughs> and squish around sometimes. Like, at least have her move quicker. Just a little bit. <laughs> what other quizzes have you made? Uh, like, I think I, I quizzed Allison on... <sighs> Vocaloids once. That didn't make it. And I think I, I, I quizzed Critter on Demon Slayer as well. And that didn't make it either. So, you know. Sometimes it's just fun. The thing is, I think quizzes are more fun if I just don't quiz- uh, Don't record it. <laughs> if I don't make a video about it. And it's just me quizzing my, my friends about things. I just like quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> don't feel so bad about it. It's usually hard to go from being known for specific content to being successful, being variety. It's true. It's true. I'm glad I've got a bit of a head start on it since I, I really started kind of branching out like a year ago or so now. Yeah, it was uh, two Mays ago. So two years. Damn, time isn't real. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, 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 yeah, I'm glad that I've gotten a head start on it. Looking at other, like, Ruby tubers, which I never- Oh my gosh, thank you, Lillian! <laughs> oh, what a sweetie! Have you ever considered playing Fire Emblem Path of Radiance? Mm. It literally reminds me every time I think about it of the fondness, but done well. I suppose this is my bribe to do so see. <laughs> which one's Path of Radiance? Is that the one with Ike? I, I'm not wholly opposed to it. The problem is I'm bad at video games. <laughs> I made another Demon Slayer one that didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, Ike. I do like Ike. I like Ike. You like Ike. Everybody's like Ike. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm really bad at video games. I maybe, you know what I'd be more interested in? Um, commentating as Allison plays. Because <laughs> I'm... I'm not good at video games, <laughs> and, and you have to you have to do that one uh, in in uh, classic mode. <laughs> so yeah, maybe <laughs> not opposed to it by any means. <laughs> we all like Ike. Which does Ike does Ike have Hawk Hawkman? <laughs> Tybarn? Is that him? Is that- is Ike's game the one with the- the angel kids? Cuz- YES! We're in. We're locked and loaded. I've got a big fat crush on- on Tybarn. <laughs> or is it Tibarn? Tybarn sounds cooler, but I think it'd be Tibarn. I would love to see more Zelda content from you twins. But you and Allison would be a riot on Breath of the Wild. Yo, I should play Breath of the Wild once Tears of the Kingdom comes out. <laughs> oh, speaking of Zelda, I'm sad. I like lost a VOD for Wind Waker. Like, like Tower, uh, everything from like Dragon Roost to Tower of Fantasy, Tower of Fantasy, to Tower of the Gods. Um, I just don't have that VOD. I missed it, I guess. And I'm real sad about it. <laughs> now my playlist is like shitty and and just a whole piece of the adventure is missing. Big, big bummer. Big bummer, Rooney, you know? <sighs> Nothing to do about it now, though. No worth crying. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have the backwards path as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think classic mode, classic mode, in air quotes, uh, only became optional with Awakening, if memory serves correctly. 
Someone playing games while friends do stupid bits in the background is my favorite genre. It's a pretty good genre. <laughs> Real solid stuff. Oh, that reminds me of a, a video that Critter had actually suggested like an eternity ago. Um, we should do that. Can't do it now. <laughs> but there's, there's another one that could include Allison that I think would be a lot of fun. <laughs> they do the fun storyline so well with the lagoos. <laughs> Lagas. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, because I have no idea what the plot to Ike's adventure is other than... Um, he hangs out with S S Sora. What's his name? <laughs> Soren. 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 He hangs out with Soren and they're best friends. <laughs> if we voice the characters, I want to voice Ike because that's funny. Like me voicing Papa Nier. Absolutely. I can be Soren. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll be Soren. That's perfect. <laughs> I wish I saw your Wind Waker playthrough. Uh, you could have referenced the uh, animatic Titanic movie, Cinderella knockoff. Oh, Titanic. Oh yeah. Titanic's hilarious. <laughs> Titanic is bananas. <laughs> you, the, the thing is, it's a JonTron video that everyone knows about Titanic. And I, I'm real conflicted when it comes to watching JonTron these days, but it is a really funny video. <laughs> I know Awakening wasn't the first time in the series overall, but it definitely made a casual, made casual a standard feature. And I think that's good. Cause, um, cause there are people like me who like, I like the story and the characters and the gameplay pretty well. But I just want an easy option, because I get pissy and mad if I lose. I lost against a fucking, um, mom. Or, like, it's like the second fight in Fire Emblem Engage. You do, like, a little mock battle with your mom, and I lost. And I was so upset and pissy <laughs> about it. <laughs> and in fact, I don't even think I lost. I think I just had one character die, and I, I was so mad. Um... Uh, that like I restarted the the whole like level and I had to go through the whole cutscene again, which you can skip. But it, you know, so you know, just just that's just the thing is I I'm bad at video games and I want to be able to still play and not rage quit. <laughs> <laughs> he has two options. What does he have two options for? Is this Ike Ike Ike? Falling in love options. <laughs> well, that's good. I've never heard of this blue-haired cat boy, though. For... Ike? Is that what we're still talking about? <laughs> Don't think Fire Emblem is ready for polyamory? I think um, Princess Celine, Louie, and Chloe uh, prove you wrong, Lillian. <laughs> I think there's definitely the... A, a, a squishy option for poly polyamory there. Personally, I just ship Celine and Chloe, and Louis is my husband. But I can see how other people could be like, those three are together. <laughs> you lost the tutorial battle in three houses twice? Oof. <laughs> I just want you to see the story. I'm sure it's good. That's the thing. I'm nearly done with Fire Emblem Engage, and I'm really enjoying the story, and I really, really like the story in Awakening, too. The story in Fates was... mid. <laughs> but, <laughs> in general, I love I love crazy anime stories. <laughs> I'd love to make one myself someday. Kind of make a comic that's like a JRPG. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how, but <laughs> it'd be pretty flippin' neato. <laughs> I like that Shadows of Valentia introduced the time rewind as a standard feature. Was that Shadows of Valentia that did that? Valentina, rather? <laughs> that, that's a feature that I definitely have been using more in this game, in Engage, than I have previously. I know that was also in Three Houses, but I, I never thought to use it in Three Houses. <laughs> I've been Ike X Soren for 12 years. I mean, it's basically canon, of course. <laughs> you, you'd be a fool to not ship Ikes and Soren. <laughs> that's like that's like not shipping Crom and Robin. 
They released a trailer for Wave 4 of DLC today? How'd I miss that? Wave 4 of Fire Emblem Engage DLC, you mean? Oh, I'll have to check that out. I was surprised we got- I didn't realize that we were getting Veronica and Krom so quickly. I thought it'd be a while for before they show up. Mila's turn wheel. Oh, I think that doesn't uh, matter to me. I, I think that's a, a thing I don't really care about. <laughs> but still fun. <laughs> you literally made Grim Magic. That's a magical girl. It, yes, that's true. But now how do you make a JRPG a comic? That's the hard part. <laughs> of course, they'd have to change outfits for every land they visit. Who else loves it when that happens in an RPG? When you go to a new location and it's like, you got a new outfit, and it's like, fuck yes, and sometimes they're shit, and so you don't roll with them, but sometimes it's like, I'm not, th this is the new new favorite. <laughs> Me and my friend cannot stop thinking of Azura's stupid song. <laughs> like, learn another song, girl. <laughs> It was pretty- the- the cutscene where she sings it is pretty cool, though. With the water effect. That's- that's super fly. <laughs> My face when Soren talks about Ike and Engage and it's like, so obvious where they want to go with them, but don't because of the cringe anime fans. I don't know. I don't know. I think- I think they- they leave plenty of hints for things like that. Um, which is nice. I've always thought the gay options in Fire Emblem are pretty shit, like in Conquest. Uh, it was the one-eyed masochist. Hey, okay, Niles is a catch, though. He's cool. Niles is super fly. Uh, but yeah, the canon um, uh, same-sex options, at least for fellas, have all been lackluster, to say the least. I think female uh, same-ship relationships have been pretty alright in, in Fire Emblem. Not great, but alright. <laughs> Acceptable, to a degree. Uh, personally, I think what they've done for Engage has been the smartest thing. Because they, effectively, they got rid of the S ranking for other people. Like, I can have Louie and Zelkov talk, and um, they can get to an A rank, and that's it. And that's everybody. Um, the female gay option in Fates, uh, it was um, uh, the daughter. She looked like Tharja. I think her name was Rajat. It was her. Um, but yeah, so as it is, I think you might be able to become super friends with somebody. You know, S rank super friends. But it's not explicitly shipping. Uh, um, uh, in Engage. And I think... I think that's the best option. What do you mean when you say Mila's turn wheel doesn't matter to you? Wasn't that like a game mode? Or like a, a mechanic? What does it do? Explain Mila's turn wheel. Because in my head, it was like just a mechanic that isn't really something I'd engage with. But I'll admit that I can't really remember anything about it. So if you could fill me in on what it does, <laughs> then I'll be able to answer that question better. <laughs> but yeah, I think engage basically getting rid of um, the S rank means I can ship whoever I want with anybody I want. I have like, I've got like... Half the army is in a same-sex relationship <laughs> uh, for me, and it's super fly. It's really fun. <laughs> That's pretty okay until you realize what goes on with Alfred if you don't S-rank him. Well, I will have to read about that once I finish the game, and then I can look up look up all of Alfred's stuff. Eh. Hang on, I've dropped something. No, I didn't drop something. We're fine. We're all right. <laughs> His story is in a hundred years. So with this Ike and Soren, we're the best of friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Rajat. Yeah, because get it? She's obsessed with you, regardless of your gender. But you couldn't marry Tharja, but she's just Tharja again. So yeah, it was her. Um, pretty lame, if you ask me. But... Whatever, I'm not making games, I guess. I think it's dumb in Fates that they can write an explanation why the kids immediately turn into adults, but don't write away for the, uh, for the, like, female and male male ships can't, can't still have kids. Yeah, I know, that's what I'm thinking. That was kind of what made me, like, applaud, funnily enough, it was like Rune Factory in Story of Seasons. Because 
like at around the same time those games came out and you can you can just marry whoever and the harvest goddess is just like with the power you two love each other so much that a baby showed up congrats anyway bye and i'm like that's just how it should be <laughs> in fantasy things like this <laughs> mila's turn wheel turns back time to a point in the map basically the same as time's pulse and three houses or the stones you can take from Vale and engage. It's an item in the main story, not a side mode. And you said that was DLC? I can already turn back time. <laughs> so I don't understand how this relates to the DLC. Then yeah, never mind. I've, I've, I'm, I'm turn wheeling all day, baby. <laughs> I feel like Ike is probably like Ironwood and that he's an intense power bottom. You know, I wish I had read that in my head first before reading it out loud. <laughs> Congrats on your interesting opinion. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Why is it Mila's turn wheel? Who's Mila? <laughs> Tell us your interesting opinions, twins. I don't- I don't have interesting opinions. My interesting opinions is that I'm- I- I want to hurt the boys. <laughs> my opinion is me x Louis x Zelkov is the best combo. That's my very, very interesting opinions. <laughs> no, Mila's turn wheel is not related to engage. It's in Shadows of Valentia. Oh! Well then, Sir Air Dude, you're the one who muddled the water. <laughs> you're the one who confused me. You're the one who got, got me all twisted. I thought you were talking about the DLC. I thought that's what Mila's turn wheel was, and I thought it was like some other game mode that I wouldn't I wouldn't care about. You were the one who who this was obviously your fault. And not my fault. <laughs> I see. Now it makes sense why we were like, our paths weren't crossing. <laughs> What's your favorite three houses ship? <laughs> Let me think about that. Oh, Hortensia X Clan. They were fun. <laughs> That's a huge line, you know, your opinions are always interesting. I can't, I can't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> My opinions are pretty mid. <laughs> what if there was a Magical Girl comic where they live in Mad Max Desert and the Magical Girls are gladiators that rep their tribes slash countries in the arena for resources? Uh, it sounds not dissimilar to Magical Girl Raising Project, which isn't a bad thing, um, necessarily. Uh, yeah, I think, I don't know... It seems fun. I think you'd have to really push the Mad Max Desert kind of aesthetic, though. Like, I wouldn't want that to just be a background idea. I would want that to be a, like, a real thing in the story. A real playing role in the plot. Because otherwise, you know, what's the point? But yeah, not a bad idea. Sorry. No, it's alright. It's alright, Sir Air Dude. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> we won't flabbergast each other. <laughs> Alchrist X Ivy. See, I went with um, Diamant X Ivy and I shipped Alchrist with uh, Fagato. And, you know, I, I was gonna go with Alfred X Yunaka, but then I got Alfred's first conversation with Teresa. Is that her name? No, Tamara. And I was like, Abort. We're going Alfred X Tamara. <laughs> all the lords are pretty fun. They're all all super fly. Magical girls in leather and spikes with souped up cars. Where does where does Magical Girl end and um, just like Sentai begin? Which is like Power Rangers. Um, like, what makes it a Magical Girl? Uh, that's a question that has been asked you know before. I'm not the first person to say that. Is it just the aesthetic? Or or is it just girls doing magic? You know? It's an interesting question, because I think everyone's got their own opinion on it. And uh, as always, when it comes to opinions and arts, no one's got the wrong opinion. 
Frills? Well, not all magical girls have frills. In Ray Earth, they're arguably magical girls, and they've got armor. Um, no frills necessary. So, personally, like, if there's no frills, I'm disappointed. <laughs> but, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's mandatory. I don't know, I just think it's fun really picking apart what goes into a magical girl story. What makes it a magical girl story. I had a random idea where magical girls fight monsters in dungeons like Madoka Magica, but the monsters break into the real world and it becomes a post-apocalypse story. Fascinating. Feels a little, like, I think that could be a really interesting way to do, um, a, um an isekai, like SAO, where, oh man, this is just another Sword Art Online clone. You know, they go in and they fight the monsters in the dungeons, and but then like, they escape, and then the monsters get out, and that becomes a huge problem, that the monsters get out of the game world. That could be really, really interesting. Cause it's an isekai, but then surprise, it's actually not. We're doing, we're doing something else. Uh, and that could be super fly. <laughs> Why would I ship Yunaka with anyone when I exist? <laughs> I wish Engage had paired endings. Yeah, it would be pretty cute to kind of be like, what what happens? What happens after the the game ends? Do they fall, get get married and live in a cabin cabin together? You know that kind of stuff. But I guess you can just you can do that yourself. They were a little limpy uh, in previous games as well. It would be like, you know, d just depending on you know character does this with their life and lives happily with wife or whatever it is, you know? <laughs> What's this? I like Diamon with Rosado personally or Rosado with Cedal. So I like, I've got Rosado with uh, Pandrea. <laughs> I thought that was a lot of fun. <laughs> Bleach is a magical girl show and they don't have frills. So what makes Bleach a magical girl show? Or how, how is a magical girl show? The protagonist is a boy. So how is Bleach a magical girl show? I want to I want to see how how we can argue this because I'm not I'm not denying it. I just want to I want to hear the argument. <laughs> Dragon Ball. So Dragon Ball definitely has all the same elements of a magical girl show, um, just featuring boys. Uh, so magical boy show, I guess is what we could call it. <laughs> And I, uh, is that kind of what we're rolling with with Bleach as well? It's a magical boy show. Twins gets to be the hero because she knows how to defeat the frog zards and escape from adventure quests. <laughs> but just pick the element they're weak against, idiot. <laughs> magical transformations? Well, see, is that necessary? Because, um... Is Madoka Magica, would it be, would it no longer be a magical girl show if we didn't get to have the long magical girl transformations? In the Sailor Moon manga, they don't have transformations. They just kind of glow for a second and poof into their new outfits. No transformation sequence required. So, so by your argument, Celeste fan, that means Sailor Moon isn't a magical girl show. Do you stand by this opinion? I think Magical Girl Transformations is definitely a staple and a fun one. I like them a lot, but I, don't, I, I wouldn't call them necessary. I don't have Magical Girl Transformations. Oh wait, yes I do. <laughs> I, I only do for special occasions in Grim Magic. That was something I was like, I know I'm not gonna draw this every over and over. The way how I approach Grim Magic is actually um, that I just, you never see the girls out of uh, transformation effectively. Yeah, the, the beginning of the chapter is them becoming a magical girl, and then the rest of the chapter is the adventures of what happens as they are a magical girl. I don't want to cut back to them at home. We never see their home life kind of a thing. That's how I approach Grim Magic personally, which is why you only get transformations, really, uh, when they get upgrades. Um, either through Brooder or through items and friendship. A little fun fact for you, just a little little bonus. <laughs> How I approached going about my comic. I really like the paired endings with Hubert and Dorothea. They just make a sort of traveling assassin opera company, and it's awesome. <laughs> the, anything with Hubert's got to be fun. Hubert's a lot of character. <laughs> 
Maybe the Sailor Moon transformations was so that it could pad the runtime. It's true. Yeah, that is a big reason why that became popularized with Sailor Moon. Is so they could save money. <laughs> no, we animate this one thing really, really well. And then we don't have to worry about three minutes of animation <laughs> every week. <laughs> I say Winx Club is a magical girl show. I, I wouldn't even... I, if someone said it's not, I'd be like, why? You're a fool. <laughs> Well, you see, a prolonged transformation sequence is just non-economical for a drawn format like comics. It's true. I remember one time someone said that, uh, and this was after chapter one, they said that the transformation that Cinderella goes through wasn't long enough. That it didn't feel grand enough because it wasn't long enough. And I'm like, you know I can't animate <laughs> for a comic, right? Like, it's gonna- I'm, I'm not doing every, like, frame of an animation for you. <laughs> I remember as a kid, my, my friend convinced me that Sailor Moon was a scientific documentary about the moon shifting tides. Fascinating. I do kind of wish Sailor Moon and friends kind of leaned into elements of the planets more, you know? But, um... Cardcaptor Sakura tra says transformations are not necessary for magical girl shows. That's true! Sakura does not transform, she just always has new outfits because her friend makes outfits for her. And is like, I want you to wear this cute outfit. I wish I had a friend like that. I wish I had a friend who just tailored cu cute outfits for me. <laughs> but yeah, Cardcaptor Sakura does not have magical girl transformations. They instead have the reused animation be her um, capturing the cards. Uh, but they also had to do it for every outfit they, they had as well. So how much saved animation really was there? <laughs> Power Rangers is a magical girl show. Hmm. See, and this is where this is where we have to like really approach the question. Okay, what what makes it magical girl? Is it just powers? Is it just you know people you know saving the day, fighting monsters with powers? Does that make Superman a magical girl? <laughs> Does it make all of Marvel Cinematic Universe a magical girl show? Like, it's tough. It's a tough question to approach. Personally, I think Magical Girl um, is an aesthetic. I think it's like leaning into a look and a vibe um, and not necessarily girls, you know, transforming and doing magic or characters because we live in a world where, you know, it's not just girls who want to transform into pretty outfits and do magic. <laughs> Um, so, like, I, I feel like it's the look and feel of a show that makes it a magical girl show or not, personally. But, also, as always with things like that, things can get blurry. There are gray areas, of course. <laughs> it's, uh, and I don't think any, any, anyone on earth could, you know, if we had a list of these are magical girl shows, and even if we had all classics on there, I'm sure somebody would be like, I don't think that one belongs on the list. You know? <laughs> no, because Marvel doesn't have transformations. They have suit-up scenes. But, like like we said earlier, Card Capture Sakura doesn't have transformations. She just wears new outfits. She just puts on a costume. So that means you're saying Card Capture Sakura is not a magical girl show. Bayonetta is a magical girl. You know? I think I agree. <laughs> I think the early 2000s Power Rangers movie could be considered Magical Girl. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I've never really cared about the Power Rangers. <laughs> it's like asking, what is a dragon? You just kind of know it when you see it. That's a good way to put it, Messiah. Also, every culture's got its own dragons. And, like, no matter what, even if it's like, if the first thing you think of is a western dragon, then, but then you see, yeah, like an eastern dragon, like a Chinese dragon, you go, well, yeah, that's still a dragon, though. <laughs> you know? Uh, dragons can be so varied, and yet you still, it's like, yeah, that's a dragon. I see it. <laughs> it's not the one I always go to, but that is a dragon. <laughs> But yeah, that's the fun thing about Magical Girl kind of content. 
is that it does get to be so varied because because as a genre <laughs> it's got so few rules to follow and and uh and i think that's fun because <laughs> that means everyone gets to kind of make their own and it gets to just be whatever you want it to be we need more we need more middle-aged woman show and how they can still be magical growing older and what that means to them hmm not a terrible take i do like seeing shows that feature older characters um yeah, I, I find it increasingly more and more difficult to uh, really care about the trials and tribulations of high school coon. <laughs> you know, going to high school and worrying about kissing a girl or whatever it is. <laughs> like, Wotakoi was a lot of fun because it's a, a romance anime, um, but they're adults, like, at work. They go to their job, <laughs> an office job, and it was just really nice being like, Finally, characters I can identify with, even though I don't have an office job. I wish I did. <laughs> Where do I get these magical office jobs? <laughs> Where you look at spreadsheets and send emails all day. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, having a, an older magical girl kind of show could be really interesting. Personally, I, I think magical girls are at their most entertaining when they are at around 11 to 13. Kind of like Madoka Magica, that is around the age range for all of my girls in Grim Magic. Because... <sighs> because girls are so volatile at that age. There's a lot going on. And it, it kind of presents a lot that you can work with in terms of a story. And in terms of, you know, magic and friendship and stuff. Um, it's why I really like Sayaka as a character. And I'm sure some could say it's... Uh, um, yeah, Calamity Mary was a fun example in Magical Girl Raising Project. But yeah, I'm sure some could say that Sayaka is poorly written. Because she learns that the soul gems are their souls. She gets it in her head that makes them like zombies. And she really has a breakdown um, about it. And that's kind of the whole crux of her character as she kind of spirals, you know, dealing with the fact that she doesn't have a soul in her body anymore. And that's what leads to, I was stupid so stupid, you know? And I think people could be like, she's overreacting. This is not, you know, what, why does it matter? Ugh. And it's like, no, well, you've clearly never been a 12 year old girl before. <laughs> and I have. And, and I think she has written exactly how a 12 year old girl would react. Like you, your, your emotions don't make sense. You, you are overreacting all the time. And, and I think that's what I really like about Sayaka, and it's kind of how I approach Grim Magic as well. It's why the girls can kind of really shift when it comes to their emotions. You know, with like, you know, in Raven and the Ravens, one of the flock members really loses her temper and she attacks her friends, um, and then she dies. And she, she says sorry, because she means it. Because when you're that age, you can't fucking control all that shit. Your brain is still mushy, your home hormones are going wild. And it just presents you with so much to work with. Girls at that age don't follow the rules of normal logic. <laughs> and so personally, that's why I think uh, Magical Girl Stories at around that age range is the most interesting because, because you, can, you just have so much to work with. <laughs> so much to explore in terms of emotions. <laughs> Yeah, Sayaka is pretty tragic. The fact that in every single timeline, if she becomes a magical girl, she either dies or becomes a witch. There is no happy endings for magical girl Sayaka. It is tragic, but I think it's a necessary tragedy um, for the kind of story that they're telling. Um, I will say though that I like that in um, the uh, 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 sequel show, based off of the game, Magia Record. They really upped Sayaka's badassery, though. I think she ends up very, very tragic in the original anime. In the original anime, she's, like, not that good, and she dies, and she has her whole, whole episode um, in Magia Record and in other kind of properties in the Madoka kind of universe. Uh, she's a lot more competent, which I think is good. Her being a really skilled fighter... Um, I think 
is a, a good thing to add to a character who really is doomed to always fail. <laughs> I'm in my early 20s and I relate to Sayaka. <laughs> I'm not even a girl. Well, we've all been sad. <laughs> we've all spiraled. <laughs> Twins and 50% of chat, Sayaka. The other 50%, dragons. Man, my Twitch chat's the coolest chat. <laughs> We're talking about Madoka Magica and dragons? <laughs> I mean, how else are you supposed to react to having your soul in an object and have it in, not have it in you? As an adult, I can sit here and grasp that that is, you know, a harrowing thing, an upsetting thing. But I, I don't think I would really kind of fall into this depression of that makes me a zombie. That means the boy I like will never love me because my soul is in this gem. You know, that's, that is how you can react is be like, well, that's really fucked up, but uh, gotta keep moving forward. <laughs> they should have dragons in Maguka. They should. <laughs> At least one girl has gotta have, like, turned into a witch that's, like, dragony. <laughs> Boy, you're like, yeah, I'm oblivious to your feelings. I'm sure that doesn't bother you. <laughs> I think if there are more magical girl, more MGA of people in adult a uh, ages, maybe we could appreciate what interesting plot points could come about. Since it could be interesting. Uh, to see the troubles that even adults of magic, girl, magic can't solve. That's true. That is true. Uh, uh, it could absolutely be interesting. Especially in a world where it's like, how do you balance being a magical girl? You know, a, a job that is wholly good. You're saving the day. But you get no money for that. How do you balance that with, like, a, a normal job? Like a 9 to 5. Where, you know, you know, you look at it and it's like, why am I sitting here bagging groceries? When, you know, this in at the grand scheme of things, in the grand scheme of things, isn't nearly as important as what I should be doing, saving the day, fighting things as my magical girl, or, uh, it could be kind of like an idol thing where you're like sponsored as a magical girl, kind of like My Hero Academia, I think is like this, where, you know, is it a valid sort of, you know, if it's something you can get monetary value from, is that useful because again eventually you'll have people who are like i'm gonna be i'm gonna be like oh, i'm gonna be a magical girl so then i could be rich and popular and not because you want to actually save the day you know what i'm saying it could be there's plenty of interesting things to explore for sure <laughs> i think the problem is most people's first thought is what do we do with older magical girls what if we make it a romance <laughs> uh, which can also be interesting but I just think Magical Girl stories offer a lot more interesting things to explore instead of how do I get the boy to like me? <laughs> yeah, that bubble bubble toil and trouble don't pay too well. <laughs> Gotta work them spreadsheets instead. <laughs> Magical Girl anime where it's about a 30-something lady working at a shitty supermarket. And tries to balance fighting monsters of being a magical girl. You know what we've just described, honestly? It's One Punch Man. <laughs> One Punch Man kind of scratches that itch. And has a primarily male cast. So, th there's a reason why One Punch Man took off. <laughs> Shit, you're right. <laughs> I still haven't seen season two of One Punch Man. I've got to. I've got to do that. <laughs> No romance, give me friendship. That feels like a family. I I can love good romance, but there is something really special about friendship shows. My fucking Lillian, you should read or watch Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season. I think you'd like it. Also, A Place Further Than the Universe. I think you'd like that one too. Welcome, thank you. <laughs> hey, it's Gemini. I expected Doug to talk. What happened to Doug? He's just in fancy mode, uh, since, uh, uh, I'll be busy for the rest of the week, and so that meant celebrating with Fancy Doug. Hi! It's me! <laughs> fancy Doug! <laughs> 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 
Gemini has showed up just in time for me to think about uh, uh, wrapping up stream. <laughs> I feel like that happens the most often with Gemini. <laughs> What's poppin'? Uh, we're talking about magical girls. We shat on uh, uh, Jean earlier. It's true, it's true. We talked about how poopy Jean's new outfit looks. How it's stupid that he was uh, aged up. Oh, I heard Vincent Kawaiian over there. <laughs> I'm always late, but I attend, I guess. You know what? That's valiant. Let me open my door. You want to say hi? No. <laughs> Alright. It's Vincent. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I put put him in the background as a poster. <laughs> so now I've got a poster of Jean. <laughs> Just flat out looks like he's wearing a dirty dinner plate. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Ayo, I know it, of one person who calls Jean daddy. I won't say who. I know, right? And what a fool. <laughs> In what- and I think that's what they were going for. I think they were like, we want to make Jean zaddy. And it's like, why? <laughs> oh, come on, twins. When has Ruby ever done a weird plot line? You're right. <laughs> Everything's clearly thought out from the beginning. They've got it all laid out. I love how the mythology around Ruby has shifted. Uh, uh, Monty has had- they've said that Monty had some things planned up to volume uh, 6. And obviously not the whole story. Duh. He introduced Maidens in season 3 before he had pa even passed away. Like, a season he didn't even- fully contribute to. So obviously Monty didn't have like a whole narrative perfectly crafted in his brain like how people want to say. But he had some ideas that going into volume seven, like into volume six. That was kind of a an idea he had. <laughs> and I think it's hilarious that now it's come to Monty had a whole story up to nine volumes planned and Miles and Carrie and it's like no no guys stop. <laughs> Monty had six years of idea. <laughs> and I bet most of that was like, and then, you know, in volume four, they'd go over it this way. And then in volume five, maybe they do this. <laughs> you know, not like a thought out narrative. <laughs> when I hear Jean, I don't think daddy. I think whiny bitch Brad Bottom. <laughs> Same, I agree. <laughs> I think, I don't know, aged up Jean could have been handsome. They went too far. He's too old, too old and smelly looking. <laughs> he does look like a homeless alcoholic. He looks more like an alcoholic than Uncle Crow ever did. <laughs> yeah, people who say Monty had the whole thing planned confuse me. Like, I doubt he wrote down, let's make Jean a homeless dill for 2023. Well, see, that's because Miles and Carrie have, have ruined his vision and they're... They're destroying his legacy. Shut up. <laughs> Monty thought probably, and then next we'll go to this location. And maybe they can fight this kind of monster. That. That is what he thought of. <laughs> Monty was so big, bra big brained, he knew how <laughs> brain dead Twitter would become. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Magical Monty, knowing the future. It's a, it's a narrative, I guess. <laughs> are there any homeless that are also DILFs asking for a friend? <laughs> I'm sure you can find them. Just walk outside. <laughs> People that talk like that about Monty make me feel really gross. I agree. Yeah, it's just like... I respected Monty so much. I cried when he died. I quote him a lot. But... To kind of weirdly put this, like, sort of god complex on top of him. And 
It's disrespectful, really. The way they talk about Monty in relation to Ruby. Like, I don't know, man. We have to acknowledge that he was still a person. And to sit here and be like, Monty's rolling in his grave. Stop. Just, just stop. If you're critiquing the show, stop bringing up Monty. Bring him up in relation to things that he actually did. You know, be like, you know, oh, Monty made, you know, like how I just did. He decided to introduce Maidens in season three. Yeah, he did do that. That's canon. That's real. That's real life. But being like, I'm going to critique volume seven and I'm going to bring up Monty for no reason. Stop. Just stop using his name as a weapon. Critter talked about that in her big, big video about what ruined, ruined Ruby. And it's like, and, and for real, for real, just stop bringing up the man's name as a shield or a weapon to try to beat the other side of opinions. <laughs> I didn't watch any Ruby until volume eight was coming out, coming out. So not exactly attached to Monty. I mean, Monty, he was just so inspiring. Like I looked up to him a lot as a content creator. Uh, I quote him all it's, it's, if you give an artist forever, they'll take forever. I think Monty had a real vision. I, I'm sad that he passed away, obviously. I, I'm sad that we don't get to see more of his art because it'd be like if Shiro Miwa passed away. He's my favorite artist. And to be like, man, we don't get to see more of what he does. It hurts. And for Monty, it was especially painful because he had just started Ruby. And it's like, even though he wasn't the only one making it, obviously, it was still his idea. And the idea that you don't get to finish a story it breaks my heart. So that's why losing Monty hurt so much for me. Was that it was an artist I really, really cared about and looked up to. And now suddenly we never would get a new awesome fight scene animated by him. And he would never get to finish the story. And that was what hurt so much for me. Um, but yeah, people have got to stop using Monty as like this sort of arbiter of justice when it comes to critiquing Ruby. <laughs> Cause it's just, just, it's just cringe. <laughs> if you have to resort to bringing up a dead man to make your point, you're not making a good point. <laughs> it's like, it was really fun choreo. His, like, I don't give, I don't know a single damn thing about, um, uh, uh, what is it? He had his little adventures that I made a whole video about. It was Final Fantasy and Dead or Alive. Dead Fantasy, that's what he had. And I know some things about Final Fantasy. Don't I don't have a single opinion about Dead or Alive. <laughs> Couldn't give a single shit about that game. But his like the fights that he did, the little like adventure he was making for them, I was gripped. <laughs> he made me care about characters when that I didn't even know about, you know? So uh, and that's what hurts, man. He was about to- the next Dead Fantasy would have had Vincent Valentine. Um, and I'm so sad that he, we never got to see that fight, because that would have been fucking- f Ooh, super fly. <laughs> the thing I always remember is that he acknowledged the flaws in his work, but it didn't matter, because it was about making art and getting better at his craft. And exactly. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's really what it is, is Monty wasn't perfect. He was very good at what he did, but he, you know, the stuff he did wasn't always perfect. If you look at the list of inconsistencies on the wiki, you'll never find more inconsistencies than during fights Monty animated. He would cut corners a lot. Um, that's where you get characters like sliding through the floor and weapons just going through characters and stuff like that. Adios! Adios! Uh, have fun! Drink your water, eat your vegetables. I'll probably be wrapping soon so I can go, uh, go help Allison pack. Um, but yeah, so, you know, his stuff wasn't perfect, but you could tell that he cared and you could tell that he was trying his best to get better. So wait, Allison's going, no, we're, we're, we're moving together. We're packing. <laughs> we have to pack the entire apartment so we can leave. <laughs> That's why Doug is here. Cause we're celebrating that, that, uh, uh, the help twins move out of her bad apartment donation goal has been a success. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, actually, Queen Whiskey's right. I'm packing Allison up. I'm shipping her away. <laughs> <laughs>
So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's all because of you guys, truly. I said this at the beginning of the stream, but it's bear it bears repeating. Um, genuinely, you all donating and helping me has been instrumental to actually helping us get a new apartment. Uh, even without getting to that 1,000, that's fine. Um, what you guys have done has been so much, and I, I truly appreciate you guys, and every single day I think, how on earth can I thank them? <laughs> what on earth could I possibly do to make it up for you guys? Because cause I'd be nowhere without you. <laughs> so, thank you. It's all because of you that we, we don't have to be in this dark, cold prison cell any longer. <laughs> Twins is too yandere to send Allison away. <laughs> I don't know how yandere I am. I think there's an a, an unsettlingly large amount of possibility that I could shift into yandere. Will you make a new background for your stream when you move? Yeah, that's a fun idea. That's something I actually kind of had an idea of, like, today. I don't know. Maybe I'll do something. <laughs> but, uh... Like, I'll maybe rearrange <laughs> the items that I've got to work with. I don't know. I don't know. But that's a pretty cute idea. Bring Alice into stream a game. I will. I will. <laughs> I will. You know what I will do, though? Once we're all settled, there's two things I'd like to play. One, I'd want to start up a, like a new village in Animal Crossing um, for the GameCube. Because, get it? You move in Animal Crossing? Isn't that cute? Um, and also, there's like a packing game. Like an unpacking game that like every VTuber on planet Earth has played and it seems to just be chill times. So uh, uh, those are, those are Twins has moved stream plans. <laughs> Watch the Lilith put on an extra 140 for real. <laughs> what a sweetie. You, are, you guys are all swell, honestly. Even if, whether it's $5 or $500, I appreciate it every single time. I really, really do. A VTuber collab? Dude, I'd love to. <laughs> I don't know how, though. How do you collab with a... I don't know what to do. <laughs> 99 cents? 99 cents isn't nearly as useful. If you if you don't donate 99 cents, then Doug doesn't say it, so what's the point? <laughs> but I'd still appreciate it. <laughs> I feel Allison is immensely durable. <laughs> she is pretty durable. Oh my gosh, on that topic, this will be our final... Uh, that twin says a Discord DM, yo, wanna collab? I just, like, what do you play? That's the thing. I'd like to, but... <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll handle that. We'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> Eventually, yes. For now, I need to worry about moving. <laughs> but the final little story I'll leave you guys off with today is... So, in the we've got all of our boxes in the living room. And for three days, I have rammed my thigh accidentally into the uh, the back of the couch. <laughs> I have a huge gnarly bruise. <laughs> it's like a horrible green color <laughs> because the first day I ran into it and I was like, oh shit, uh, whatever. And I figured it might become a bruise, but you know, case sera, sera. Second day, ran into it again and it hurt way more. <laughs> and it was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> And then it happened the third day, and that was when I got mad about it. <laughs> and I was like, help me move the couch. <laughs> no, there's not going to be any more streams this week, because we're busy packing and stuff. But, uh, uh, that's why, that's why I chatted with you guys today. So you can still get your weekly dosage of me. <laughs> Illustrious me. <laughs> On the fourth one, Lego Twins' leg will fall off. <laughs> <laughs> can't learn shit from the past the problem is it's cause like the path was so narrow and I've got these big honking thighs and, and I move too much when I walk it was a recipe for disaster oh thank you <laughs> okay <laughs> thank you stereotype gamer <laughs> I appreciate it <laughs> Twins, big honkin' thighs, ink. <laughs> but it's fine. We moved to the couch, so... Um, I do have a bruise, though, but... 
twins' loins of steel ache. On that, as actually a final thought, what, on the topic of having loins of steel, that is inaccurate because uh, we had a- so my parents had a pool table for a couple of years when we were growing up. And one day, I, it was like perfectly crotch height with me. And one day I just somehow managed to run into the corner of the pool table. I was going to pick up the phone, I think. And I just misjudged everything. And I've, I, I've never been in more pain <laughs> than when I ran into the corner of the pool table. I, I hit the floor. I, I was in so much pain. And I was like, if this hurts me this bad, I feel sorry for fellas. <laughs> so, no, loins of steel, inaccurate. <laughs> but it is it is what it is. <laughs> so, that's my final tip, hot take. Don't don't run into pool tables cuz it'll hurt you. <laughs> The room goes white, then black, then slow motion fall. <laughs> Big honkin' thigh. What'd you say, punk? Big honkin' thighs. Yeah, well, these thighs ain't just for attractive masochists. <laughs> oh, man, I am Mr. Krabs. <laughs> well, so, there you go. Some fun, fun little anecdotes to leave you off on. Hopefully next time. Hopefully next time, uh, we'll have more hilarious things to jabber jaw about with Jean being old now. It's so weird. Remember how they jumanji Jean? <laughs> but yeah, the song ended. That's a perfect cue for me to wrap it up. <laughs> so, I'll see you next time. Hopefully the internet is not poopy in the new apartment. We'll deal with that, I'm sure. But, uh, adios. I'll see ya. Drink your vegetables and eat your water. And have a good one, and thank you so much for being here, and and supporting me however you can. You're all sweetie pies. Adios. See you on the flip side. <laughs>